What's up, everyone? And this is Next Level Thinking. What's up, everyone? This is another episode of Next Level Thinking, where we always inspire you to take that next step and take it to the next level because we want you to get the best out of your life. So today I have a special guest by the name of... Ernie McBride. Who's doing some pretty big things in Houston. So I'm bringing her to the show as your host, Chris Holmes. So, but go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself so we can get familiar with you. Okay, so uh, my name is Maria McBride, and I go by Tia for short. Uh, my name's me. And I'm a native Houstonian. I've uh, been in Houston pretty much all my life, me and my family, um, except when I went away for college. Okay. Uh, went to the East Coast and West Coast for college. But um, Houston was growing at such a dynamic rate, and there was a lot of opportunities here, so I ended up coming back to the city, uh, graduating from University of Houston Bauer School of Business. And after graduation, I went to the oil and gas field. Oh, wow. Um, on the accounting side, and working in an accounting department. And um, a few years ago, I got my real estate license. And I've been a full-time real estate agent since then. So I left oil and gas and went into real estate. Okay. So currently, that's what I do. Nice, nice. Awesome, awesome. So I pretty much gathered that you pretty much stayed in Houston for a good amount of time. time. So, like, what is, like, the biggest change you've seen so far? I know, like, everything is moving so fast, especially with the Internet. But, like, what's the biggest change from, like, high school to now? Oh, yeah, so Houston, um, the population increased. We became the fourth largest city in the United States. So that's one of the biggest changes. A lot of jobs, um, medical jobs, like we built up our medical center area. And then um, that has created a lot of opportunity in the medical field and other industries like oil and gas and tech companies have moved here. Um, we expanded even like the fashion industry, like a lot of people would um, have to travel to, you know, when I was up, a lot of people would travel, like I guess like New York or Miami, you know, to, mm-hmm. to um, shop at all like the more name brands. Uh, department stores with stores and then a lot of them started moving here into the Galleria area so right. that, is, that has expanded and then our the restaurant industry has taken off so much so that there's just like you can find everything every type of food that um, well, you crave and before when I was growing up it wasn't like that it was kind of um, very limited on on, on, the, on the eateries that were available our nightlife mm-hmm. has grown as well and we the city has um like expanded the amount of uh, like clubs or like uh, break, like activities for the city to do. Mm-hmm. So sound like sound like Houston it pretty much. A lot. It has sound like Houston growing a lot, especially for opportunities, jobs, and especially with entrepreneurs. You keep, uh, you keyed on uh, an important thing when you were talking about like, the fashion trends and with the technology yeah. and things like that. And then um, as you said earlier, like it used to be, if you want to go for like fashion had to go way to up northeast in New York and all of that. But now, it's like, Houston has become one of the main hot spots now with, like, all the things that's going on, the improvements. Exactly. And, like, the Super Bowl. It's, like, Houston's, like, the hot spot of, like, the U.S. So. It's yes, pretty- I totally forgot about the Super Bowl. So now, yeah, we're getting, like, the major sporting events. And we have the Houston Dynamo. So we have, like, uh, the soccer team that didn't have that. I think, what, 10 or 15 years ago, we didn't have the soccer team. Okay. So we have a soccer team, and uh, we have newer, you know, we built new stadiums for all the um, top professional sports. So, yeah, we can, we can, um, the city can definitely hold uh, any, pretty much any major event. Uh, awesome, awesome. So, like, with all of this new opportunity, what do you think is, like, the biggest, newest challenge? Like, cause with everything, of course, the growth and the speed is great, but... What are some of the new challenges that you have faced yourself and you think is coming for any other new coming business owners? Uh, I I see a lot of opportunity. I don't know if there's... I only, the only challenge I see is probably for the city itself, just keeping up with the demand of maybe like the housing. And um, the jobs are still there in the city. I don't think we have any challenges with employment. I think... Aware of. I think what I was. I mean, there's layoffs, but there's still so much opportunity, and even there, but. 
Oh, definitely. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm not. Yes, go ahead. You good? But I definitely with that. But I guess I was like, um, kind of keying on like the competition with like the with a rapid increase of the growth and so many people coming to the Houston area. You have a lot more people in your industry now than the, it was just like the very few. And you pretty much, I feel like you got to stay on top of your game. How about you feel? How, how you? Oh, oh, uh, def- oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Like, um, so I guess. Well, with the industry I'm in now, it's it's, it's really competitive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's it's, it's a tough industry to be in. Um, there's about I think it's about forty thousand agents. Oh wow! I had not even realized yeah, that. Yeah, so. It's, and then there's always people, you know, every month passing their exam or taking their test to get into the real estate industry. But um, yeah, it, it, it has a high turnover rate as well because it is a challenging industry to stay with it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very costly, you know, the marketing and the the, the, the fees and everything to stay in, stay in the industry. But I mean, I I'm still doing pretty good in it, but. I, I guess, yeah, I guess as the city has grown, there's challenges for every business owner. Mm-hmm. You know, there's opportunity, but then there's challenges of them, like, staying competitive in that in their business, in their field. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, yeah. I got to ask this, like, what kind of put you in the direction to go towards real estate? Was, like, something you saw on TV? Did you have a passion for something that kind of pushed it forward? So, like, how did it all, like, unfold? Oh, I'm sorry. Say that question over. I couldn't hear. I couldn't now, hear what you were saying. The teaching part. I'm perfectly fine. I was pretty much like, what basically got you started into real estate? Like, what was the main drive or passion for it? Um, so I started when I was uh, working at oil and gas. I started with rental properties at first, and then um, when I was working at oil and gas, I started doing some like how much you yeah. put into it of course there is that flexibility but if you don't put in the work you're not going to get the results yeah. that you want and uh, you also exactly. keep on something that's very important like a lot of the top I call them top dogs in entrepreneurship they do I mean they have added an additional stream of income of real estate uh, one of my favorite ones that have gotten into this kind of business is Damon John as we all know the creator of FUBU and things like that and like real estate yeah. is very pop, becoming more popular with um, entrepreneurs. Even another one, um, a popular one I know is like Grant Cardone, and many others. Yeah. I'm pretty sure uh, people know of. 
that just uh, built this up because like once you, I feel like if you own some kind of property there's so much you can do with that you can put a franchise on it restaurant um, you can sell it back I mean you may have there's just so many different things you can do once you have property to like just have the income yeah. coming for almost a lifetime and more Yes, and then you can pass it down to your kids, and it's it's really good to have own. Um, you definitely need, like, if you have a, there's nothing wrong with having, like, a day job. I always tell people, sometimes people want to leave their day job, get into real estate, and I'm like, you know, just, if you can, just keep, stay where you're working, because that might be a 50, 80, 90 thousand dollar a year job for you, and then just have the real estate on as just extra, you know, add, add more properties. You know, and if you buy four of them, two hundred fifty thousand. That's your, you know, your net worth is now a million dollars. Right. And then as those double over 10, 20 years, then you have two million dollars. You sell it. Now you have the two million dollars, and then you have whatever you've been investing over that time period into your four hundred one k or saving. Gotcha. Now um, I got to ask. Yeah, you just add, add it on to what you're already doing. Unless you want to do it as, as, as a full-time career as an agent. Very true. Now, I got to ask this because you hit one of those terms. Like, uh, so if you can explain, like, what determines a person's net worth exactly? Is it, like, assets, what they have? I feel like there's a lot of confusion when it comes to net worth. So, like, can you explain to the audience, like, what that all in type in, in brings? Well, the equation in, in accounting, assets minus liability, of your net worth, what's, what, what's, what the number is after you have your assets. So if you have a $100,000 house and you owe 50000 then your net worth will be the remaining 50000 Okay. I mean, unless you have something else. I'm just saying if you have that one house. And what other... Um, and that's great. And what else can be considered as assets? Uh, so, like, people like that's not, not really familiar with a lot of the accounting terms can know. Because I feel like this is information that a lot of people de- do need to know. Okay. Oh, um, you can... Let's see. Um, real estate, stocks, bonds. I think, a, I, think, I think also, like, antiques could be an asset. Okay. Antiques or like if you own um, a popular art work, that could be an asset, something you um, can sell for more than a value, like more than you pay for. Mm-hmm. That could be an asset. Jewelry is classified as asset, like real, real, real stones, real diamonds, minerals. Very interesting. Uh, that could be an asset. If you own like an oil well or you have oil on your land, that's an asset. Um, I don't know clothes to be an asset. You know, I think those are more liabilities. Like if you buy and spend a lot of money on clothes or going out to eat, that's a liability. Hair, nails, and makeup, as much as we, as women love to spend money on that, that's not an asset because it can't really make us um, an income from it and we're also and we're spending our money to acquire it it's not bringing us any money back in um, and that is very true I'm bre- glad you brought that up because that's, 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 that's that, liability yeah that's the main reason I want to ask that question because a, a lot of times it is confusing what's an asset and what's a liability especially when it comes to things that we want not necessarily yeah. need, but want, like, you know, the clothes, stuff like that. There's a lot of yeah. misunderstanding. Our, our, most of our cars are liabilities. Um, we spend, like, if we buy a car, $10,000, just an example, 10000 Yeah. And then we're paying interest on it, so we may pay, like, 5 6 8%, 10% interest. We may pay another, you know, 1000 2000 a year um, in interest payments. And then uh, we have to pay gas. Right now, gas runs me about you know four hundred a month, a hundred a week, Maybe. just roughly. And then yeah, then we have the brakes and the tires and insurance every month. So maintenance could be another two thousand a year. Yeah. Um, so that's a liability. But then if you also may own a classic car that you you know 
bought, I don't know, bought it at an auction or bought it cheap, and then you went and resold it, that, that could possibly be an, um, an asset. Or if you own it cash, your vehicle cash, sometimes when you go and apply for like a, 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 a loan, they'll, they'll classify it as an asset under, because of, in, because if you sell it off, they can, you know, like if you default on a debt or something, they, they feel like you can sell that off and get, that, get the cash out of that. Great information, definitely, definitely well needed. So, like, um, tell me a little, a little bit more about your business side and doing real estate. I know we gave like a lot of uh, value information, and in but like, what is like your um defines your own business when you're doing real estate? So, tell me about that. Okay, so I work in residential real estate primarily. I'm just now getting into commercial. Mm-hmm. Um, so I help buyers um find a home. And uh, negotiate a contract, and I help them with the inspection and uh, the appraisal, helping them get everything just lined up. Their financing, helping them with the down payment assistance program if they need help with that. Um, and then also, I just I do uh, consulting with sellers when they're ready to put their home on the market and get it sold. Great, 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 great. And I think I read something a little bit on your website where you do something with charities, I believe. Yes, so I've I pretty much always been involved in charity. I started, um, when I was a teenager, I started like in Texas Children Hospital volunteering in Texas Children because I thought I was going to go into the medical field at that time. And then over time, I've done like Habitat for Humanity. Um, and I think, I can't, I think it was this. March, February, oh yeah, it was March. In March, we teamed up with um, Dominique Austin. He has a charity called Tackle for Cancer. Mm-hmm. And we teamed up with him, and I hosted a charity fundraiser at King's Restaurant in Missouri City. Awesome. Yeah, and um, I've also been a part of the Human, human Trafficking Charity event. And just various ones around Houston. I'm not. I'm not a part of like one particular one. I just volunteer if someone calls me to help them with the charity event. Well, that's very great because like is um, we need that a lot more often when it comes to making a big impact into the community. And I'm glad to see you're doing that tremendous effort because you know like we can get all these great things, but we always got to give back and like remember. There's always someone out there like probably have a little bit more stro- tro- struggles than you may think of, so that's always good. And then for Hurricane Harvey, um, we raised money. We helped raise money for that in supplies. Uh, we teamed up with uh, Portia Stewart of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Yes. She came to Houston, and then we volunteered there, helped with you know getting the word out and getting supplies donated. And there, the number I got, the final number I got was roughly 500 families were helped that day. It was so many people that day, I really, I, I, I lost count. But the final number we got was around 500 people. And we gave out cash checks. Um, we gave our cash checks and then also, like, because it was close to August. So when the hurricane happened, so a lot of kids lost their school supplies. We gave out a lot of school supplies um, and household items. Or, you know, restrictions. 
rescinding the water rescinding, I guess at that time, receiving, I'm sorry, receiving at that time. But it was still water. Um, so we went over there, and that area was really devastated. There was one mock open, and so we got. I just went live on Facebook, and and, and I just told people we needed so much help. And a lot of people came out and started donating food and hot meals too, because the people needed hot meals. You know, they haven't had hot meals in like three or four days. Oh, that's um, awesome. And they had no electricity um, to cook anything, and everything was destroyed. So, um, and and, they, and there were some people. That I, this was so mean. Some people were like, "Well, why did they just get in the car and walk to the store or do the?" You know, it was. We will have some negative things to say at that time, but I was like, well, you don't understand. There's, you know, your, your car's been flooded out, and you, you know, also you're on a fixed income, so you, you don't have any money. It's not as easy to just get in the car and go, go way across town to a store and hope that there's still supplies left. And, you, and all the gas stations were closed down, too. And that, you know, for, for a certain amount of distance. So people over there couldn't get, it's not like, you know, even, even if they got in your car, they didn't have enough gas and they couldn't get to the other side of town, basically, is what I'm saying. Yep. So, we were able to get truckloads of stuff that brought over there for them. Um, See, it's, yeah, that was, that was yeah, it's like when you have like um, devastating storms like that, it reminds you to um, be grateful for the little things uh, like food and things like that. You know, like you don't know, realize a lot of times like how much you really need them until it's gone. So, you know, big credit for you for like helping out with things like that. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and shift this a little bit. Um, what is like uh, the top three motivators for you as you make your daily steps in life? Um, my number one motivator is my all my family. I, I do pretty much everything I do in life is for them. I have a really large family, um, so everything I do is to be a good role model for them, show them that show them it can be done. I wanted to touch on something going back to when you said um, give it charity and give it back, and you know, like the reason why I give back. When I was growing up in Houston, I grew up in you know pretty. Poor, poor low income areas. And growing up, you know, we didn't have, there was times we didn't have food, there was times we didn't have uh, toys during the holiday when all the other kids had toys. Mm-hmm. And people would come into the community and they would bring toys. We had to stand in line, you know, and get our number or whatever, but they'll bring us toys. We got to pick, you know, out some pretty nice things. At least that's what I bought as a kid. I, you know, I got the toy I wanted, the dollhouse or whatever it was, the bike, whatever I would. Whatever it was at that time I wanted, I just remember getting it and being satisfied. Yes. Um, and then at the time, you know, we didn't have food. People would come and bring food. So that is my, that is, so I would never know who some of those people were, you know. That was back in the 80s, 90s, whatever. I would never know what organization, what, 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 what uh, person did that for me. So going forward in Houston, I'm going to always get back, always volunteer, always contribute to the city. Because I never want, like, a child to, like, if I can't, you know, like, if I, if I can, if it's in my power or if it's in an organization power and I can join that organization to help them even just give out the toys or whatever, I just don't want anyone in this city to, going forward, to have to walk for anything or, like, you know, like, um, I just want to pay it for it is basically what I'm saying. That's how my way of paying it for it was that maybe um, when we were out, you know, handing out supplies for people and they needed the supplies or food or, or, or cash money, whatever it was, that they, that, you know, maybe one day in their life they can go in the future when someone else needs help, they'll remember that and just go, go um, continue to pay it for it in our city. Right. And... If, if every person in their city just, just you know, like, get out in this community in their city and just help out, um, you know, we can just continue to make the city a better place and help people. Definitely agree with you on that. Uh, so, yeah, always give back and, like, when things like that, make sure you make an impact into your community because uh, you never know when yeah. the, the ties may, unfl- uh, you know, flip on the other end. Like, you may be that person needing help. And because of your past exactly. actions, and that the person. Hurricane showed us that. The hurricane showed us that. Yeah. 
research, he showed us that it didn't matter. He said the million, I mean, I don't know if you saw in the news, like the million dollar houses in Memorial with Ferraris underwater, you know, and some of those people didn't have insurance because, uh, flood insurance because, you know, at the, you know, there's a lot of parts of Houston we don't need flood insurance. It just never flooded as bad as Harvey. So you just never know when the tides will turn on you. So always be grateful. Yes, yes. So that's a definitely a big, huge uh, life lesson right there to appreciate the things that people do for you and then including the community because you never know when you... And then just, yeah, and just pay, keep paying it forward. Yes, yes. So wrapping things sure. up, um, any closing, like, inspirational uh, marks you want to give to the audience? Uh, I know you pretty much hit about your business, challenges, and, like, making a huge impact into the community. Uh, any closing notes you want to give? Um, I think that was pretty much it. Just saying, like, um, I think you're just asking about my motivation, so my family, giving it back to the community, um, and just uh, try to be a good role model for the for the people in my community. Great, 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 great. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna go ahead and close this episode out. You know, awesome guests with us. Um, make an impact into your community. Always be grateful for the little things in life because you never know when the tides may turn. And just stay motivated. You know, do it for your family, friends, brothers because you never know who's watching. So with this out, you know, it's your host Chris Holmes always inspiring you with our special guest by the name of Dorian McBride. And we're out. So make sure you subscribe, share, and keep the message going. Peace. I put